if the rest of my days are going to be spent to do that, and that's the chief end of who I am, I am absolutely out of pocket, and I will be ashamed when I go into his face. And he tell me, but I wanted you over there. I wanted you to use some of that retirement money while you had this free time now. Get on down to that youth center and teach them kids all that, all that math and that golf. I, and then go travel. Take a vacation and get on back to the kids when you get back. Our lives must be, if he's Lord, must be lived for his will. Here's the contrast. If he comes in and says, I'm at retirement, I got money stacked away. And my game plan is, I'm about to chill out. He come in and say, no, you ain't. I got more work for you to do. If he doesn't break my will to respond to his will for my life, I'm in a heap of trouble. But people <clears throat> don't like, people don't like at the core to be made to do anything. They don't like to be told, like, they, like, I have the hardest time getting my daughter up, and she knows she need to be up. Like, I, it's like, but she just don't want you to say it or wash the dishes. No, I was going to do it already. Like, don't, don't tell me to do it. I don't even, even though I know I should be doing it right now. People at the core by nature, I don't want nobody else running my life. I don't want it. Wow, there's another scripture. Um, thank you. You got me out of what I was thinking. Right. You're right. Because listen, and we also don't like to be wrong. We don't like to be wrong. We will disguise, hide our wrong. We don't want people to see us not measuring up to whatever standard we have of ourselves. It's, it's, a, it's a human flaw of I don't like to be exposed of my error. But you know what? Every day I wake up, God says to me, in you, you can do no good thing. You are absolutely wrong at the core left to yourself. Now, in me, you can do all things. Why? Because I'm going to be getting the work done through you. But left to yourself, you ain't going to bear a piece of fruit at all. So you got to. Okay, so we got to grab this. We got to go back to Isaiah. But go to Luke 19 right quick. Luke 19. We got about 12 minutes. Oh, man. All right. Luke 19, verse number 10. Luke 19, verse number 10. Sister Rihanna, if you could read that one for us, please. Yeah, go, go. He went to have himself, what? <laughs> he went to have himself appointed king. Now listen to this. Christ comes in already knowing he is the king of kings. He comes in absolutely knowing what he came to do is to bring us to see his kingliness. Is that a word? It's good. He brought us to be made inside knowers of him being the king that is seated on the throne, the one who should govern my life. He should dictate whatever my existence is. He should unlock my purpose, send me out to do his work. He came to have himself appointed, meaning have people agree with what is already true. Now remember, that's repentance. Repent for the kingdom of God is at hand. That's the statement. Repent. The kingdom of God. Listen to what the kingdom of God is. The kingdom of God is the rule and the reign of God 
in the hearts of men. It's an internal kingdom. They was looking at this. Why they missed it? They was looking for an outside kingdom. We finna beat the Romans now. The Jewish people about to rise on up. I, and let me just say one thing on that. I love our people, black people. But he didn't come, Christ, to set us in power over everything. I know to the day that we get ready to leave up out of here, there will still be issues that the black people going to have to fight, and it's going to be fighting it for years. It's going to be issues till the world ends. They ain't going to ever get fully resolved. Why? Because the problem is in the hearts of men. You can change all the rules you want to change. But if the problem ain't on the paper, the problem is in the heart, people are going to still act how they want to act, and that paper ain't going to govern my heart. Why? Because I dictate what I'm about, what I believe, what I think, what I think is right. And so he came to bring forth a spiritual kingdom that's going to rule and reign in our hearts. And listen to this. The kingdom of God is not meat and drink. It's not physical things. It is righteousness, meaning I've been made right with God. How did you get made right with God? I seen Christ in his glory. And when I seen him in his glory, I saw myself as a dead man. I saw myself as worthy of all damnation and wrath and judgment. I saw myself a sinner. And then he says, the kingdom of God after righteousness is joy. And after I seen him in his righteousness and his glory and I saw myself undone, he accepted me. He said, come unto me. Come unto me. I didn't deserve for him to tell me to come, but he accepted me with open arms. Said he did something for me to bring me out of what I already deserved. Joy flooded my soul. What was the next thing? I had peace of mind. My conscience was clear. All of the guilt that my sin deserves, all of the exposure that the holiness of God brought to a sinner and terrified the living daylights out of me, I have been brought to peace. Why? Because I seen Christ in his glory. I was brought to see, brought to the light of the knowledge. I was made to know what he did on Calvary's tree for me and when I saw that joy came and peace what's the opposite of peace calamity confusion. war confusion the war was over because remember I was in rebellion to God even though I may not have even known it I may not have been like God I ain't doing nothing you say but how I live that's what I was doing. I run me. Let's get back to this. Let's get back to this. So we on verse number 14. I'm sorry. Wait a minute. That is what every one of us in this room have said in our life. I do not want that man to reign over me. He don't tell me, listen to this. I remember I was sharing testimony of some of the things that I've been brought to believe about how God saves us. Like, you know, I thought that, you know, the Lord was in the cuts waiting on me. Like my journey with him would never begin until I made that first step. And I had this tug of war of words with my, my, my cousin who's a minister. And, you know, he was trying, he was resting in these things. And I was still thinking I did something like, well, you know, um, he was like, how did you get saved? I'm like, man, I came down to the altar. I'm like, well, what made you came, come down to the altar? Man, I heard the preacher. He was, his message was come to Jesus. And he said, well, what allowed you to hear, and he get a key word with it, and understand that he was talking to you? It stuck me right there. Well, I was reading it in the Bible. Haven't you read the Bible before? And did you always understand what it was saying? And he went through this back and forth thing. Well, and what made you do that? And then he went all the way. What made you go to church there? Like, he just, and I remember through frustration, I said, I guess God did it. And then I 